All right, guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel and thanks for dropping by. In this session, I'm going to show you guys how you can quickly and easily create your own custom vector halftone brushes like this. Essentially, what we're trying to do is create a halftone image that we can repeat along a vector curve, right? So uh, I'll be working in Publisher on my desktop, and that's simply uh, for convenience. I can quickly jump back and forth between Designer and Photo and have access to everything I need. Uh, specifically, I need the Vector Brush Studio in Designer, and I need the filters in Affinity Photo. Uh, and now that we have Publisher on iPad, you can also do this on your iPad. I'm simply doing it on my desktop as uh, I find that technical tasks like this uh, often go much faster on the desktop. So, yeah. Uh, rather than giving you a lengthy uh, commentary on the step-by-step, -step, what I'm going to do is just quickly walk you through the step-by-step -step so you can see how quickly you can do it once you understand what you're doing. All right. So first, I'm just going to create an image for you guys. All right. You ready? So here we go. Step one, we need a rectangle. This rectangle can have any fill of a percentage of black, basically. Um, I would recommend somewhere between 60% uh, and 35% will get you pretty much what you may be imagining, right? So I'm going to go with, uh, let's say, 45%. All right. Actually, I'll go a little bit darker. We'll, we'll go We'll go 50%. No problem. All right, the next step, jump into Affinity Photo Persona, go to Filters, go to Colors, and then Halftone. Monochrome is fine, just click it again, and then Round. You don't have to use Round, I'm just using Round because it's sort of, I don't know, the stereotypical Halftone. Um, there are really cool things you can do with the cosine, I can talk about that in a later video. Actually, I, I've talked about it in past videos. Anyhow, that's neither here nor there. Choose an angle. Uh, I'll explain it later, but I recommend using either 0 or 45. Um, these other angles are going to, you're going to run into trouble with those. And that's something that needs time. You need time to address. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with 45. I'll hit apply. And then basically, the law of the jungle where, uh, vector brushes is, are concerned is that to create a usable image for a textured intensity brush, which is what most of these brushes are. In fact, I think all of the default brushes, save one or two, are uh, textured intensity brushes here. What you need is a white image on a black background or no background at all, right? What we have are black dots on a white background. It's easy to fix that or reverse it. We can just go to our adjustments uh, and add an invert adjustment. Now we have white dots on a black background. So now that we have this, what I need to do is so that I can extract a usable portion of this image, I need to get in here. And first, I'm going to rasterize that adjustment layer. Um, then I'm going to jump back into photo and I'm going to use some of my selection tools to clean it up. What I want to do is clean away all the stuff on the edges here. And um, that could be, it can get really tricky, especially since I've used such a dense field of black. 50% is fairly dense, so there's some overlap. But I'm hoping I can get it close enough so that I can not leave too many of those little white specks behind. But even still, that's not an issue. Essentially, what you want to do is just clean up the edges. Okay. And then the, the, the next thing that you sort of want to keep in mind uh, is whatever is going on on the left side of the image, you want to make sure that it is also similar to what's happening over on the right side of the image. So you see how these big, big dots have appeared here? That's a sort of a an aberration that occurs due to the, the half toning process. So I'm going to come in all the way to here, and try to cut those out. Cool. Now, you see, I've got these little areas here that I need to clean up, and that's going to be a little bit of an issue. So uh, I've dealt with this kind of thing in the past, and I know what to do. I'm going to jump in to Designer Persona. I'm going to create another black rectangle. I'm going to put it behind 
I'm going to adjust the size just a little bit. Just enough. I'll line these two things up with my alignment tools, the toolbar. Cool. And then what I'm going to do is get in here real close and take a look with maybe maybe for today what I'll do is I'll hit it with a mask I think masking is the simplest approach I'll hit mask layer right and I'll go in with some white and a pixel brush of around eight pixels maybe we don't want it to be too large um, maybe something like this let's see That's, oops, sorry guys. I'm still with my selection tool. There we go. That's a little bit too small. Let's go something like this. See, now what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning up. Getting rid of all the trash that I don't need in the pattern. Coincidentally, if you wanted to, you could do something fun. And uh, maybe we'll do that for our first example just to have a little fun. Uh, I'm pulling a First of all, that well, no, uh, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna spare you any acrobatics. Okay, we're just gonna keep it nice and simple today. Uh, while I'm doing this, I just want to say thanks to everybody for subscribing, and thanks to all of you who have subscribed and stuck around. Um, I've been to the doctor a lot lately. I've got some problems with my larynx, and uh, essentially, it's uh, overuse. I have developed sort of a chronic laryngitis according to the doctor and it's probably he, he says it's I'm a teacher and I'm YouTubing and those two things are just basically putting a whole lot of work on my vocal cords and that's why I'm losing my voice all the time and that's why I'm getting um, you know like upper respiratory you know problems uh, it's like it's my my throat and my my larynx are sort of weakened in a weakened state right now so it's not good um, and I haven't been uploading regularly as a result of that because I'll lose my voice and feel really run down for like several days in a row, like five or six days. So it's something I'm trying to deal with right now. I hope you guys understand. Anyway, we're here. We're at the moment where you can create this image. So what I want to do is group these things together and just sort of take a look at what I've got before I export it and sort of show you that what I need is I need a white image on a black background. I need the junk around the edges cleaned up and that's it. So now I can export this. And I'll export selection only. This looks good. I'll hit okay or export. We'll call this uh, example one. Cool. And now if I back up a little bit, Go to my brush studio in designer persona now let's create a brush go to the burger menu and then new textured intensity brush find my new image and double click to get into the settings and then here we are so guys check it out it's pretty cool right um what's crazy about this is that i can't tell where it's, you know, it's right now it's got it. You see, it's got it as, uh, it's got it set to stretch. Now watch what happens if I go in here and I'll just draw a line out, then I'll set it to this. It stretches it out, right? So it's not like a true half tone. So what you want to do is delete that, go back in, set it to repeat, but now we've got another set of issues, right? Um, there's a gap, okay? And that's because my pattern isn't seamless. But that's all right because because this is a halftone pattern and because we sort of took care of ourselves and we let ourselves, you know, have, uh, we used 45 degree angle, right? So we have these vertical rows of dots that we can latch onto and we can use to create the seamlessness. So what I'll do is I'll come in here. I'll try to get this right in the middle. It's never gonna be perfect. Uh, it can be, it can be done, but if you're doing it quickly, it won't be. And what you can do is you can use the image up here 
you can see where they connect and you can sort of gauge where you need to how, how much you need to split it I've got it set about right there and everything looks fairly fairly seamless it's actually really nice I'm looking for other areas where it might not be working so well looks about right right there even though it's so weird because visually on, from here it doesn't look like it should be working but it is somehow I think it's because of the extra black on the edges anyhow we hit okay or close maybe I want to add a little size variance to be able to edit that I'll put it at 25 percent maybe we want to add a little opacity variance so we can sort of make it fade into nothing then we hit close and now let's try again get rid of this we don't need it anymore add this and if I want to bring out some of that opacity or size variance I can go into my stroke studio with it selected right uh, let's uh, create a 150 point line let's go in here and bring the curve down a little bit and check it out so now I have this really cool thing that I can do I can basically create this halftone row that like you know uh, disappears into nothingness along the curve which is really cool let's uh, close this delete it rather okay cool so from here a couple of things like I said earlier this is I guess this is kind of like class review like uh, five minutes before the bell I want to make sure you guys understand everything we've talked about first when you're creating these um, textured intensity images you need a either a black background like this or you need it to be set to null but the, the thing on the inside needs to be set needs to be for example if it was like an oval like this it needs to be a white image so you get something that looks like this right that oval is going to be white but there's no background that'll work but it's hard to see right you can't see what you're working on so of course you get the black now you can see what you're working on and uh, you can line things up and make it work and sort of get your image in gear that way so black background white foreground for the image okay that's the first thing and the second thing is when you're in photo persona and you are creating your uh, halftone um, sort of seed here I guess you could call it uh, like I said you know remember anywhere between you know I would say 65 and 35 percent are going to return like very classic you know, uh, stable and uh, even looking halftones. But then the closer you get to the darker end of things, you start to get where they're crowding in on each other and they're a little bit harder to edit. For example, like this. Like this. Uh, this one's actually quite fun and easy to deal with. Uh, I like this percentage, but you know the closer you get to to pure black and the closer you get to pure white it gets a little bit more tough to edit it right so there's that the next thing that you want to remember is that you want to make sure that you use an angle either 0 or 45 uh, you can use these others but you won't be able to get like this really nice repeating image out of them it'll be really hard to do you could use these for one shots for example if you wanted to you could just create like a utility strip right so like I could come in here maybe I need 60 um, you know degree half tones for whatever reason and then I come in here and I set my size and I just export this image it's it's gonna be really tough to get this to repeat yeah I, in my experience 0 and 45 are the ones you want to stick with if you want to have this ability to repeat guys let me know if you like the video leave a thumbs up um, you know any questions or things that you want covered uh, just leave them in the comments and I'll, I'll I'll try to do that I'm actually having more fun answering people's questions than I am coming up with my own content so uh, yeah just uh, let me have it uh, give me some questions and some challenges uh, I'll, I'd love to try to tackle them guys Keep working hard. Uh, take care of yourselves. Uh, stay positive, and uh, we'll we'll see you in the next one. Okay, cheers.